Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Sebastian Ball. Today I'm going to talk uh, about three things. Uh, first thing is um, a data transformation process. Second, about uh, the historical data we are, work uh, we are working on. And third, about the vocabulary we are using in this context. Okay. Good. Uh, what I'm going to do, first I'm going to uh, motivate this work and give you a little insight uh, why we are doing this in, in the project. Uh, secondly, I'm going to talk uh, about the vocabulary, vocabulary in more detail and talk a little bit about the data set you, so you can actually see what the data looks like. Then I'm going to define the problem setting which can be uh, determined by the, the properties of the data set and I'm going to show you an approach how the um, the workflow was implemented. And finally, I will con uh, conclude with the contributions. Good, so what is uh, motivating our work? Um, first of all, we are working on the uh, statistical and historical data source, which is uh, the statistics of the German Reich. Uh, we uh, have access to it in a digitalized um, format. And well, this is data about uh, ships traveling uh, at the year what, in the 1880s, or it's about import and export of goods in the German Reich. And yeah, we want to access this data. We want to uh, know what is in there. And we are all doing this in the uh, context of the EXS project. So we want to access the data, recommend it as cultural uh, long tail data and do some analytics on it, like visualizations or more sophisticated uh, analytics. Yeah, but first, uh, before we can do this, we need a process to access the data and actually do the data integration, and therefore we have to do a heavy data cleaning, transformation, and data fusion. So this is a, a theoretical approach. Um, to make it more practical, i just show you uh, some data of it. Um, yeah, it's statistical, so you see we have uh, lots of numerical values and also we have labels which gives, give us the meaning about uh, what is this data actually about. Um, so on the left you can see, um, for example, a, a geographical hierarchy. On the top you can see, okay, these tables are not too simple. Maybe it's, uh, there could be some problems um, how to integrate, how to analyze this data. The target structure of our data looks like that. So you have seen uh, what is the source, and this is where we want to go. So naively, you, could, you would say, um, I look at my numerical fact and just look at every label which is uh, referenced by this value and reorder it into my, into my nice table. And then um, I can uh, I have this normalized version to do the uh, data analysis uh, on it. So for example, um, here you have your uh, values together with, uh, in the first uh, column you see this are only numerical facts, and then you have geographical information, you have uh, time information, but in a very normalized and approachable way. Okay, um, but before we're going to the actual transformation, let's talk about uh, data cubes and, and uh, the vocabulary. Um, a data cube is a multidimensional data structure known from data warehousing processes and it's um, specifically built to do uh, analytical operations on it. So maybe you want to do aggregations, you want to combine data from different years or you want to drill into the data uh, or have a, a more um, aggregated view. And you can always think, as for an example, is um, this, you see the sales cubes over here. Your numerical facts are, for example, your sales in a, in a specific year and your dimensions for this to define what this uh, numerical value is. You need to know which client so, uh, did you sell your product to, what was the product, and when did you sell it. So you have a key value relationship between all the dimension values and your product value. Um, yeah. So this is the, the visualization thing. You can have more than three dimensions, but uh, you can keep this table in your head. This is the rep representation we are targeting for. And what is the RDF data cube vocabulary? 
this is actually uh, actually um, this is an RDF based uh, vocabulary of course and it just models this uh, data cube in an RDF style um, so you can reuse these concepts um, in the RDF world and also this brings us the interlinking and dissimulation and lots of other uh, advantages we, you don't have in the in classical data warehousing so you can profit from this uh, concept here so yeah it defines uh, the, the vocabulary it defines uh, what are dimensions what are measures you can construct hierarchies and but for now we can just think when we talk about the data cube you can think about uh, this ordered structure table as just shown you, uh, shown you before good again an example well this one you would say doesn't look too uh, difficult to interpret so you just take your numerical values put it in your column and look what are my uh, dimensions which describe my values but um, it gets more difficult for example this is the one you've seen before you've seen there are lots of missing values hierarchies on one side or very complex and depending uh, dimensions so for example um, on the top you see these dimensions actually form a sentence and you can just reorder them because then you would lose the context of the, of the cells so the actually highly depend on each other and it's not just okay this is this value I just reorder it because you don't have um, the structure anymore um, luckily we don't have to work on, on, on images of this data but we have um, data which is in the T format so this is an XML based format and we also have uh, annotations on it like we know what is a data we know what is a label which helps in the conversion process so this looks like a very simple example but we have uh, actually uh, also problems so let's first have a look at the data for example here you see a, a row which contains a sum it sums uh, all values which are above of this row this is at first this doesn't look bad but in the in the target structure you can't have this all the data have to be in the same granularity and also when you aggregate every of the data you can't have uh, the, the sum already in there because it would um, your data would wouldn't uh, your computation wouldn't be correct anymore let's look at another sample here are um, repeat symbols so the data depends on, uh, on the cell above if you do a reordering this uh, reference is broken here you have uh, a composition um, these files are in this way that one document uh, corresponds to one page in the book but the table is uh, larger than one page so we have to concatenate lots of these pages and in the books there are references headers are repeated or um, chapters are repeated just to know that where you are but when you integrate the data you have to resolve all these dependencies which are inside of, um, of the table and there are lots more of this there are lots of very small structural um, properties which have to be resolved before they could break anything in your final target and every and these are not uh, even every uh, possible uh, mistake or error in this data and this is a very simple uh, table so your algorithm you would need to implement to convert this to your target structure could get very very complex because you have to uh, consider every of these problems and also not uh, also not only your data can actually be problematic but also the structure of the tables for example labels could be wrong or the or structural dependencies could be wrong um, there are row and call spans which have, to, which have to be resolved and if in your targets uh, in your source uh, data is only a minimal minimal error 
um, it would make your uh, table crooked and all your resolving would be, would be false. So you have to do a lot of checking in this case too, not only uh, the actual data itself, but also you have to check the structure. So um, let's define the problem setting. Uh, our data is encapsulated in multiple files, where one file uh, corresponds to one um, page in the actual book. It is in this structure unusable for sophisticated, uh, for sophisticated data analysis because you can't apply your uh, standard algorithms to it because um, you have to do a heavy normalization uh, before you can do this. So you have to resolve this complex structure to, uh, yeah, to have a normalized structure. Also there is dirty and faulty data and also you have to check structure and the annotations because, because they might uh, introduce another um, error. And also this data set is very huge. So, and you have lots of lots really small problems, but they add up to a really high amount and also you don't know uh, which of them will occur in your table and how do they uh, relate to each other. So you have to, to have to resolve it in a specific order because fixing one problem could generate two new or could uh, break the resolvement of another. So how can we approach this? Um, first of all, we have chosen the RDF Data Cube vocabulary as our uh, target format because it gives us this uh, normalized view of data which is able to be uh, the input for uh, data analysis. And also we can interlink it with existing resources and also we are able uh, to merge this data which comes from the different uh, data sets and give it into uh, more uh, sophisticated analytics. Okay. The next point is uh, we've developed an incremental, uh, incremental workflow. This means um, that we are not trying to look at, look at a table and build this huge algorithm which is then able to fix all my problems, then get to the next data set, which is about some other data, and do the same thing again. Um, the approach is to generate uh, a set of transformations which are very fine granular and one algorithm only fixes one problem in this data set or in this table. And so you have a huge set of these transformations and the next step would be how can I re uh, order these transformations and how in which sequence have it applied to this uh, data set to be able um, to get to my normalized version. And therefore, there are, and therefore a prototype was implemented which can do this and it also has a not very beautiful but functional uh, graphical user interface which allows you to do that. So you can, you can select and configure what transformations should be applied to the input data and you also get an HTML preview of every step you have done. So you see, okay, this row probably must be deleted. You, se you select the uh, according transformation, click on the correct uh, row, and it will be deleted. The next step you will see, okay, this row is gone. Now you have another problem you can fix, and iteratively you can um, work on until uh, all data, or hopefully all data are fixed, and you can export it. So how does the actual workflow uh, look like? Um, first of all, uh, the prototype is capable of loading um, a complete link group. A link group is, uh, are all tables that um, are part of one table, which might be split over different pages. So we all load them at once. And we pass all the files into an internal data format. So we are not anymore depending on the TE format and doing all the transformations in our, uh, on Java objects and therefore this prototype is also capable of importing other uh, formats, other, for example HTML tables or something like that and therefore um, yeah, other importers could be written. 
The next step is merging all the single tables uh, into one large one, and then the real work begins. So you have to look at your preview and see, okay, uh, maybe the merging is, is wrong. So you have to fix uh, some spans or something that the alignment is correct of all this data. And then every uh, you can check all the transformations and, do, uh, and apply them. In every step, the HTML visualization, visualization is produced uh, to give you a feedback, uh, instant feedback. Finally, when you're done, you can um, export this into your RDF data cube and then we are able to reintegrate it into the EXS workflows and do recommendations or something on it. Also, it is possible here to export it to other data formats if you not want to work on RDF data or you have specific needs for your data, you can uh, also write um, another uh, export mechanism here. Good, so let's look at, the, at some transformations where it, everything revolves about this uh, normalization, normalization process we had in the beginning. You're looking at um, your facts and you're trying to find all your dimensions which are relevant in this case. Uh, you have to reach this step, but first you have to restructure your data to be able to perform this step. So this is your uh, temporal target to find a normalized version of your table which you can then reorder. And mainly you do that by introducing um, redundancy into the data. So the, the source data is very precise and, and very dense uh, and normally relative, relatively good, understandable for humans, but when it comes to the computer, it's, it's getting different. So you're trying to normalize the data by introducing uh, redundancy in the data, which is later no problem because in the analytics there are other formats which uh, on other schemas which are prepared for that but for our case redundancy is the thing um, uh, to go for. So most transformations actually deal with uh, pre-normalization steps. So there are for example over 30 of them and most of them do some sanity checks or do data cleaning for example they try to fix the structure, they introduce um, redundant cells to split up the, the column spans and row spans and also, for example, deleting rows, for example, the deleting headers, which could be in there. Second step is the normalization. Um, you can have just a simple one or there can, could also be, um, there could be multiple cubes in one table or there could be um, still a horizontal or vertical partitioning of your data for example, because of repeating headers, and there are more complex normalization algorithms which can also deal with that. And lastly, you can um, do post-normalization um, uh, transformations. You can think about it as, okay, now I have a normalized table, which is uh, very column-based, and here you can add or merge columns. Uh, merging could be, for example, relevant if there are any hierarchies uh, in your data and you want to resolve it by combining it into a single um, cell. And also you can add the headers. For example, when you have lots of products in one of the cells, um, you need to describe it. For example, you need to uh, say, okay, this is product and in my, in my cells are the instance of it. And then also you can find a disambiguation for it. This means you can link it into the, to an existing, uh, for example, DBpedia resource and to link it to existing uh, data. This then can have additional uh, benefits like you're able to merge uh, some, of the, some of the data. And also you can add metadata like uh, provenance information or something like that. Good. Um, there are also advanced transformations. So I told you there are lots of very simple ones, for example, deleting a row, and uh, we are able to combine such uh, simple transformations into more complex ones to be able to fix more complex um, problems. For example, finding errors and then automat automatically fixing it uh, with uh, such a combined uh, transformation. So for example, there are every repeat symbol 
can be, um, or every sum column can be deleted. So we are looking for there is a sum, and then automatically applying um, the, the already implemented transformation. Also, to assist the user uh, in the graphic user interface, you, uh, in, uh, there are transformation suggestions, uh, suggestions implemented. Um, like if you find characters which tend to be uh, the cause of a problematic or of an error, you can suggest him, okay, in this cell you have this character, maybe you want to delete the cell or you have to do some structural modifications to it. And also, this is a step uh, towards automation um, because uh, yeah, the user, uh, this must be a manual process because the structure is too complex for an automated process, but uh, scanning the layout and the structure, you can um, determine if there might be a problem and then suggest the user, okay, look at this uh, specific point, maybe uh, this is an error, you have to fix it. And then at the contributions. So we've implemented a modular workflow for a data uh, integration process. We have defined a huge, um, relatively huge set of uh, granular transformations, which are, all, uh, which are also combined to more complex ones. And this prototype is uh, usable with this data source and also with other data sources. And, and the also good thing is you have lots of these links groups are very similar to each other. And what you can do is you can use an existing chain of these uh, transformations and apply it to another one. For example, um, the imports not of the year 1880 but of the year 1881, but the structure is minimally different. So you have other structural uh, errors. You can reuse your uh, transformation sets with, and with uh, little modifications. Also, we have um, lifted and enriched historical uh, statistical data by linking the headers, uh, this and the headers into the linked data cloud. And this is now ready for visualization, visualization or analysis. And our current data set contains more than 30,000 files. And we've converted more than 10% of it. And in this uh, process, we've created 10 of these conversion chains whereby uh, like five of them are very similar because we used um, similar input tables and also there are different ones um, to see if we can reapply the implemented um, transformations to the new data sets. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs>